double check it. I mean, always want to make sure everything's on here. Okay, just let me pull it up real quick. And then two Josh. Two Josh. Two Josh. Okay, how many? Two, two okay. Right, a Corona, okay. yep. And what else you get? How many Casamigos you got? Casamigo, I've got uh, one, two, three, four on the Reposado. Are they one liter? Yeah. Okay. And then I got uh, one Tito's liter. Okay. And then I got one of these, Woodford. Yep. 750. And then three, four of these. Yeah. Yep. That's everything. All right. Awesome. All right. So I just picked up the alcohol for tomorrow's party. This broke my holder to my camera like the whole piece it like it fell i had it on the dashboard and then it fell and now it's in pieces luckily i have another one to get me through the weekend but now i have to order a new one like this joint just popped anyway now i'm at the mall waiting for it to open because my sunglasses broke this is the second time that they have broken the first time I, you know, I just glued them back together. <laughs> and then the second time I was just like, okay, Brittany, just get yourself some new sunglasses. So it's been a couple of weeks and I've been struggle busing through uh, these outdoor events, but tomorrow's a pool party and I cannot, I cannot fade it. I cannot fade it. It's already looking like it's going to be 90 degrees and super sunny, which I'm happy about, but I need some sunglasses. So it's only about, what time is it? Yeah. So it's 9.32. The mall doesn't open until 10. So I'm just sitting here and I just figured that, you know, I'd talk to you guys and share an update. Since we're here, I do want to say thank you to those who have extended very kind words and words of encouragement and even shared how the video aligned with what, you know, some of y'all got going on too. That was a very, it wasn't difficult to share in regard of me talking about it but it was difficult in terms of me actually sharing it, like me actually posting it because that was a very vulnerable video. And I I struggled with it a little bit because it was that, that fear of judgment. But once I realized what was going on, that's when I knew I had to post it and I knew I had to share it because we, we, we in a new season right now. We not letting fear stand in the way of what moves our hearts at least me so I, I felt i felt the need to share i realized that i was afraid of the judgment and the backlash that would come with me sharing more specifically me crying on camera <laughs> so I, I i had to i had to check myself in that regard and i'm glad that i'm glad that i um went went forward with it i'm glad that it resonated with, with some people. Whether it did or it didn't, I'm glad that I took the leap and took the step that I needed to take to move move past it. Because if I didn't, it would have lingered and I wouldn't have felt good. I definitely feel much better. So yeah, so, th so thank you. Thank y'all, for real. But anyway, yeah, we're actually doing two parties tomorrow. It's, well, parties. One of them isn't really a party. It's a, it's a tasting. We are working with tag hoyer again we actually did an event with them i want to say it might have been back in february i can't i don't really remember but we work we work with them earlier this year and they're doing something to where might be a father's day thing i'm not really sure but they're doing a spirit tasting so tag hoyer is actually a part of the lvmh group so that includes them louis vuitton vouve clico glimmerangi which is going to be um, one of the spirits that's going to be available for the tasting, Belvedere, Kenzo, uh, Hennessy, Fendi, Sephora, yeah, Marc Jacobs. But there's a there's a bunch. There's a bunch a part of this this group. Yeah, we're doing a tasting with them. It's only going to be one signature cocktail. I wanted to use the Glimmerangi for a signature. I'm going to provide all the non-alcoholic components. They already have the alcohol part figured out based on what we did with them last time. Then there's also gonna be the pool party tomorrow. Now, I normally, I told myself that I was gonna stop doing these double bookings because they're just too hectic. I don't have, let me say this. It's been rather tricky. <laughs> it's been rather tricky finding people that 
meet me where I want to be met in terms of my standard and stuff like that in terms of the setup and just a variety of things so I basically just got to the point to where it's just like okay I'm just gonna focus on one solid event per day type of thing that's what honestly works best for me I was once upon a time caught up in the oh I want my calendar book let me just you know let me make sure I have all these bookings but I, I instantly as soon as I tried to do that I instantly realized I was like I am not a a quantity kind of person I'm a quality person I prefer a few quality events over just a, having a bunch of random of just a bunch of random events like that's just not that's just not my vibe I'm not I'm not a general public kind of gal I, I like my circle small <laughs> I'm very particular I like to work with a select group of people and that's that's one of the things that I had to realize about myself and one of the things that helped me navigate and focus which direction to take my business yeah that's what I've been doing but so in tomorrow's case the only reason why I did the double booking was because one of the clients I already have a relationship with I already know what to expect and just with the time frame and stuff too it would it, it just all worked out the 90s pool party was already booked for the tag courier event she came after the fact and was like i hope you're available to help with with this tasting so just looking at the details and stuff like that once she shared all that stuff with me and i felt like it was it was the best course of action to take so that's the only reason why i took it and again i already worked with them before so i already have an idea of what to expect in terms of the setup and all of these different things also too corey he did the last tag courier event He's also gonna do the one tomorrow. So he already has an understanding of, you know, what's expected and how to do this, this, that, and the third. The first Tag Courier event that we did was also in combination with an Alexander McQueen event that we did. I took those two in the same day only because they were in close proximity to one another. So literally, basically right across the street, it was man, it was manageable. It had its hiccups and stuff like that in terms of be, me being able to contact people and blah, 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 and just the time frame. But it, it worked out and that that's why I did that. And then Dwayne, he actually was at the Mark Jacob, or not Mark Jacobs, what is it? Alexander McQueen, child. He was actually, he actually did the Alexander McQueen one. So I'll have the both of them doing Tag Hoyer tomorrow, which makes me feel comfortable in doing the double booking. And then with the pool party, myself and Joseph will be tending to the pool party. That one is more labor intensive because we'll be taking the bar and we'll be outside and it's signature cocktails and all these other factors that I had to consider. And ultimately too, like that was the first one booked. So I had already planned to be there anyway. I only took the other one because I knew that I was able to, you know, put on bartenders who were familiar with how to do that type of event so it all worked out Oh my god i want this so bad so i went to try it on the small was long enough but it didn't fit around like my torso so i got an extra small and it fit around my torso but it did it wasn't long enough and i was just like oh you mother bro tall girl problems <laughs> for real 
but I did get some sunglasses, which I was in there and there were so many, there were so many. I saw these Tom Ford ones and they were bad. But I wasn't, I couldn't pay, spend no $500 on the sunglasses. Anyway, I did get these though. Frame check, they feel so good on my face. And I like the, the thick, the thickness and the chunkiness. <laughs> so once I get my eyebrows and shit together, I'll be good to go. And then my red lip, you know, my signature red lip, I, I realized I have a signature lip now. And it's that red, that red just, it just pop, she just pop. So that with these, and once I clean up my eyebrows, we're gonna be good to go for tomorrow. Ready to party. I, I came across an email from, I'm just, I'm literally just going through a bunch of different ones that have come through between yesterday and now. And I came across an email from what looks to be not, is it an event planner? The owner of an event space. So she reached out to me saying that she basically wants to get more information on whether or not we work with venues directly, which we do. And she basically is interested in adding milk and honey to her vendor list. Being added to a, ven a venue's vendor list is like goals. Like that's, that's a good thing. When people go to that event space, the event space shares with them the different types of vendors that they may be interested in and or needing in order to, you know, have their event at that space. And us being a bar, like we're one of the main people that are contacted. Ultimately, it does just depend on the venues. Like some venues have just us and we're a part of vendor list where, you know, there are multiple, well, I wouldn't say multiple, but there are a few. There are a few other mobile bartending services to choose from just depending on what is offered and different price points. I'm sharing this with you guys because she asked whether or not, she asked me whether or not I would, if I was familiar with the alcohol on-premise requirements for the for the city in which her venue is located. Now, we've served in this area before, so I am somewhat familiar, but because I honestly have not looked up the information in a while, I just thought that I'd give myself a refresher. And yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty much the same. I just wanted to make sure though, that nothing had changed and that I wasn't missing anything. So, make a long story short, I ended up giving the city a call. I, I basically just gave her a general scenario. I didn't really, I mean, it, it was just a general scenario. And I was like, I just told her that I'm just looking for, for more clarity on whether or not we need an alcohol license in order to serve. I told her that we are just serving. We're not providing alcohol. The alcohol would be provided from the client. We would just be hired to oversee and manage the mixing of the cocktails. She asked me, are we doing beer, wine, or um, distilled spirits? I told her all the above. She left me on hold for a solid like 10 minutes because she honestly didn't even know how to answer my questions. So yeah, she comes back 10 minutes later and she just tells me the only way that I would need an alcohol license is if we are doing for-profit sales. And we got clear, we were just going back and forth, just trying to, she was just trying to make sure she was understanding me. And then I was trying to make sure that I was being clear on exactly what would occur. So it was us, you know, trying to, you know, make sure we were on the same page. And she went to whoever she went to, I'm guessing maybe even her supervisor, I'm guessing maybe her supervisor or somebody like that, I don't know. But she basically just comes back to me and tells me that we do not need a, we do not need a alcohol license unless we are doing for a profit sales. I said, no, we are not selling alcohol. We're not charging taxes on the alcohol, nothing like that. We're not, none of that, none of that. I'm not supplying bottles from a wholesaler and then selling it back to the client. Like that's not, that's not what I'm doing. Good. I made it very clear <laughs> that we were only going to oversee the service of the alcohol. The alcohol would be provided by the client that they purchase um, from a, you know, a liquor store or whatever for their wedding, their birthday party, their baby shower, whatever the case may be. And yeah, that, I mean, that was that. That was that. I mean, I don't really know what else to say about it. Those that are claiming to have uh, bartender's licenses, I, I still don't know what that's about. I really don't. I have searched 
at least in the state of Georgia, it doesn't exist. In my original video where I talked about bartenders licensing, somebody commented and said that they need a license where they live, but that's literally like few and far between. Think about it like how you need a driver's license in order to drive a car. You don't need a license to mix drinks to serve as a bartender. You don't need a license for that. You do not need a license for that. So I don't know what people are, are meaning when they say they're a licensed bartender. I think that that's them saying that they're a licensed business, but I feel like they should reevaluate the wording because it's very misleading. And it has people coming to people like me asking for a bartender's license and I don't know what to tell them other than go watch the video because I'm tired of explaining this shit. At the very most, from what I've seen um, and what I've experienced, you need a serving permit. And that just depends on the city, county, town, whatever, in which you're serving. You need a permit. That's maybe $25 to $50 max, maybe in some areas 100 maybe. I, I mean, I haven't seen it that much but I feel like it could go that high just depending and that's to you know cover the cost of the background check and the actual license because I mean I you know you get the actual I mean not the license excuse me not the license the permit the permit the permit yeah so that just covers the cost of the permit and the background check but other than that there's no bartender's license and you do you do not need a license to be a mobile bartender. You do not need a license to serve alcohol. You might need a permit, but you do not need a license. Yeah, it is there. Unless you're doing for-profit sales, unless you are getting alcohol and then going to a public place or even a private place, whatever. If you're going somewhere and making drinks and then you turn around and say, hey, that'll be $10, hey, that'll be $15, something like that, that's when you need a liquor license. If you do it without one and it catches up with you, you get caught doing it, then it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fine. And uh, I, uh, only God knows what else, I don't know. But yeah, you don't need a liquor license. <laughs> if anybody were to need a liquor license in a private event scenario, it would be the actual venue, the brick and mortar, the physical building. Because I mean, that's, that's what you need in order, to, in order to do that. Unless you're doing a special event, of course. I mean, that's where it differs. But I'm trying to make sure I cover all the points here. But, but that's it. Good morning. Here to get coolers, drinkware. So one party's doing glassware, one party is doing um, shatterproof options. And just other back bar and service necessities. Oh, I need to get that other thing on real quick too. But. This is all of where I store my mobile bar equipment. Yeah, this, this, this is everything. I want to say a 10 by 15 unit. This is not a reflection of my organizational skills. <laughs> Things tend to just get disheveled over time. That's why it's important to create systems. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly I'm going to do with milk and honey. I know I need to organize it, but I'm not sure if whether or not I'm going to do it in a way to make it manageable for other people. Because once upon a time I did have it that way, again, just literally over a time with us moving and, and just people going in and out type of thing, it just kind of got just really messy. So, I mean, this is what it is right now, but still got to figure out what exactly I, I'm, I'm wanting to do moving forward beyond 2023. So because we also have to bring the bar today, I am going to set aside the stuff for the second party here and then I'm going to have to come back and get it when I come and get the bar because it's not going to, the bar is not going to fit in my car. So I got to pick up the van and then come back here to pick up the bar and I'm going to do that with everything else. But right now, I'm just focusing on setting up for party number one because I got to be there at 9 30. <laughs>
section after the fact. bookings in a day because people are not understanding that it's a domino effect like it's not just about them it's not just about you you know if I say I need to be somewhere at nine o'clock I need to be there at nine o'clock on the bright side I did manage to um you know run in between errands or whatnot but bro <laughs> I'm hoping that I can unload set up and get everything done by 10 because I'm supposed to meet Joseph at 11 to pick up the bar. I feel like I can pull it off. It's just it's just stuff in between that I got to do, which I'm probably not going to show because me trying to keep being mindful of the camera and all of that and remembering and all of that is just, it's just a bit much because things are hectic in some cases on event days. But this is, this is why I need to just maintain my one a day events so that way I'm not feeling so out of sorts I, I don't I don't like feeling so antsy this is this is a bit much I didn't have any breakfast yet it's 922 didn't have my morning tea I just I woke up hitting the ground running and yeah yeah that's that's been the morning so far but we gonna get it though so don't even trip <laughs> Thanks, 
time. Honestly, only four minutes, but it's gonna take me 30 minutes to at least drive back. Wish, wish me luck. This bar is a monster. What do you think is the best way? Um, normally, we just take it corner for corner. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm about five minutes away from the venue or from the client's house. So I had a set up. Corey and Dwayne will manage that. Um, and Joseph and I will be at the pool party. I'm actually going to set up and send him to the store and run some last minute errands for me. The first thing I've had, had to eat in this is the first thing I've eaten today. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's it's blazing out here. It's only twelve o'clock, but it's already hot. So once we get set up and stuff, I feel like we'll be fine. Anyway, green light, gotta go.
like a small bucket, it doesn't have to be big. Something tiny. Look at this ice. The sun is roasting everything. We're under the umbrella and only just like the tip of the bar is out. But the sun is moving, is shifting because of, I mean, the earth. <laughs> I'm falling over. But it's like, it's killing the ice, bro. OMG. We got about two hours to go. I mean, we still got a significant amount of ice and some ice in the freezer, but bro, we had to put everything down here because the bar was just getting demolished.
I scratched my hand, I cut my hands up this bad. 
I don't know if y'all can see, but it's like a cut here, a cut here, a cut here. Do I have any more? Oh, damn, a cut here. Dang, a cut here. I cut my hands all up. I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. It's It's been a full day. So, it, you know, all went well. It had its, its hiccups. It had its hardships. <laughs> Ultimately, all went well. But despite the wellness of the day, <laughs> I am reminded that this ain't for me. <laughs> oh, uh -uh, I cannot. That heat. Cannot. That moving that bar. Uh -uh, cannot. Cannot, <laughs> cannot. Like, I'm really on the fence about whether or not, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what I'm going to do um, as far as the bar rental goes because I need to hire people. Like, I legit need, like, somebody separate to move in hall because that is just too much, too much, too much. It is too much to pick everything up, load up, then unload once you get to the venue, set up, serve, clean up, break down, reload, take it back to storage, or if I gotta bring it home to clean it, I mean, yeah, bruh, nah, bruh, <laughs> nah, bruh. I've been doing this shit long enough. I, I've been doing this shit long enough. It, enough is enough. All went well, though, like the party, I mean, I wasn't at the in-store tasting, but the pool party was so lit. I enjoyed them so much. That heat though, that heat was, ooh, that heat was so taxing. It got to the point to where I realized I needed to eat something because I felt like I was gonna faint. I didn't drink, none of that, none of that. I literally had water, OMG. It, it's no, it's no real way around it, to be honest, other than just having an event inside. But it's a pool party, you know, there's like, nothing that anyone can do about it. You know, the client, she did her best to help. So it's just like, like, what do you do? I don't know. What I do know, though, it, it ain't for me. It ain't for me. I guess, honestly, to be honest, like, it wasn't like the bar, it just depends on the group, I'm realizing. It really just depends on the group, and it ultimately, it just depends on what mood I'm in that day. Because <laughs> they, they were cool, but like I said, that heat, honey, that is not the vibe. I like summer, but not in the way where I'm doing manual labor in it. Absolutely not. I legit like. I need to take. I'm gonna take a shower. But I just wanted to make sure I got this off my face properly. I was like, I was dripping sweat, dripping sweat. <laughs> that shit was crazy. And then when it came to break down, so after, after service, and it was time to clean everything up. I had an attitude. I had an attitude. I had an attitude. I was just ready to go. I was irritated that, you know, I had to move all of that stuff back up that hill, child. It was just enough for me. <laughs> enough. There are definitely easier ways for me to make money. Uh, definitely more creative ways to where I'm just not doing the most. One thing I can say, though, is that I'm a bad motherfucker. Like, the stuff that I pull off single-handedly a lot of times, it's just like, I'm tight. I really am. <laughs> I really am. I, I, gotta, I gotta give myself props on that one. Anyway... I'll give you guys an actual recap tomorrow because I am legit tired. It is 9 o'clock. I'm about to take a shower. Realized I had more watermelon left, so yay. About to eat that. Including um, some to-go food I took from the party. 
Like I'm just gonna chill for about an hour and then go to bed. So 